Welcome to Scotland. In this episode, we are going to do some travel, we're going to do some question and answers, and we're going to do some more exercise. Mostly runs and some weights, but really this episode is all about Q&A. You've asked lots of questions, I'm going to provide lots of answers, and what a wonderful place to do it in. So enjoy this episode. If you've got any other questions, please send them through or put them in the comments below and we'll do more of these episodes. But for now, let's do some Q&A. If there was anything you could go back and change in this process, what would it be? I'm a big believer in things happen the way they're meant to happen. However, if I could go back and change something that I did, I would go back and work on, get my food right first. I didn't realize how hard that would be. I mean, well, I did realize, but I didn't, if that makes sense. So I would go back and work on that understanding, getting the knowledge, figuring that part out first, and then crank into the exercise. I started with the exercise because that's my fun place. That's much more fun to deal with than food. So that's what I started focusing on first. Uh, and it was good in forming habits and other aspects, but I really would have put more effort and time into my food and understanding what I needed to know to get to the point where I am now, because I really could have got rid of that extra 20 kilos that I've still got to get rid of in that 12 months if I had have understood that better, um, or at least most of it, I think. But that's, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So I don't really think about that too much, to be honest. But it is a valid question, and I'm happy to answer it. How did you maintain your motivation across the entire journey? The first thing I'd really like to say here is to forget motivation. Motivation is not what you need to be worried about. Um, motivation might be the thing that triggers you to make a decision, but it can't be what you base the whole journey on because motivation will come and go. It will be strong, it will be weak, it will be all over the place. So let's just drop the motivation idea. What you need to build is habits. That's what will get you across the line. Get up every day, put one foot in front of the other every day, make the right choice every day. That's what will get you there. Don't even, you can look for inspiration, you can look for motivation, but they will not be there when you need them. What will be there is getting that, when you get up in the morning, by the time, there were many days that I didn't have motivation. It may not look like that on the videos, but there were many, many days when I didn't have the motivation. But what I did have was the determination to put one foot in front of the other. So I would get up and by the time I had my shoes on to go for a run or by the time I had my cycling bibs on or whatever it was, that lack of motivation was replaced by, all right, let's get this done. And that's all you need to work on. Forget looking for motivation because it will not get you to the promised land. I can absolutely assure you of that. What was your original motivation for this whole thing? Well, that's a good question. I had wanted to make a change for a long time. I was never... Let me go back a step further. For a long time, you know, I made my priority, my kids, my family, my business, and just put myself to the side because as long as I did those things, then, you know, I was doing my job. And that's how I kind of viewed things. And, um, and then as my, you know, we've only got one child left at home now, the rest of all flown the coop which is fantastic and I guess it for me it really brought to light that 
I was, I had put everybody else first and then I was this big, fat, uncomfortable, unhealthy person that I didn't want to be and so I really wanted to change that and be when my kids were out of home the business is going great so I and I wasn't going to be able to enjoy myself I was just going to still be uncomfortable and fat and unable to do anything and I didn't want that to be me I didn't want to be one of those people so that was where my original drive came from to do something um, I wanted to be you know we had our first grandson last year and I just couldn't see myself you know how was I gonna play with this little boy if I didn't get my shit together you know and that was just one of 20 other things that just kept pushing me towards this um, need to make a change so so I did. It's never too late. amazing it's, it's the second fox I've seen it's another fox crossing the road up there anyway not something you see every day in a city so um, this continues my light workout schedule and just sort of keeping things ticking over really gym workout this morning as well um, while I can and then I'll just be probably doing two or three runs a week and a gym workout if I can find the gym and just to keep things going while I'm on holidays and before we get back into things more seriously when we get home so that is all coaching how did you find one and was it worth having I find my coach Let's start with, was it worth having a coach? Absolutely 100% yes. Um, I don't think I would have been successful in completing the Ironman if I hadn't have got a coach. I'm pretty 100% sure actually. So, and there are a lot of reasons for that. I think just, let's start with the basic ones. There, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to get my, I wouldn't have been able to get the right kind of training done, I don't think, um, to get me across the line. And I don't think, but I think for me, maybe the bigger thing, because when you're not an athlete, you don't really understand the metrics that your coach is talking about. So you don't really know how far you are off the mark or how close you are or like you can go and ride 100 kilometers or whatever but you don't really know what that means if that makes sense so what i the biggest thing i got out of having a coach was that when he said to me i've got absolute confidence that you'll be able to make it you know assuming everything goes okay um that was what that helped me in my mind on race day um, I could hear Fergus's voice going you've got this you know you've done all the work 
you've ticked all the boxes along the way and that for me was invaluable like it's it stopped all of that doubt or it stopped as much of the doubt that I would have had with no coach let's put it that way how did I find Fergus good question I don't remember the exact sequence of events um, but I had watched his double brutal um, video and thought well there's a man who knows how to get it done um, that's probably and and the fact that he was on YouTube and um, so I just set up I reached out to their to Omnia performance um, which he's the founder of and um, Fergus is one of the options for one-to-one -one coaching um, and it worked out great we had a catch-up initially just to have a chat and see if we see if everything lined up um, because obviously one of the things with a coach is you want your personality needs to kind of mesh because this person is going to have to kick you in the ass occasionally sometimes you know it's you don't want a dictator but you don't want a pushover you want someone who knows when to push and when to pull and when to turn you and all of those things. So I think it's really important to have a meeting with your coach first before you sign anything up, um, just to make sure that you're on the same page and, and whether what you're aiming to do is possible. Um, I, don't, I don't know whether, I think Fergus probably had some doubts right at the start, I don't know. Um, but once he saw what I was prepared to do, then I think it was all good. Um, he, Fergus isn't cheap, um, and nor should he be. He's a high quality coach. Uh, actually, think he probably should charge more for what he does. But I was paying about a thousand dollars a month um, for coaching one on one, and obviously that gave me access to Tom, who is the nutritionist as well, who was very helpful. So it's a full service um, process with Omnia Performance, and I. I think it was good value because for me, I needed all of that um, and probably more. So for me, the you know, it probably seems expensive to a lot of people, but for me, that was great value and, and I'm continuing to pay it because I want access to a really high quality coach who is available to me pretty much all the time and the nutritional advice from Tom, and I think the whole package um, has worked really, really well for me, and I couldn't recommend it more highly. Obviously, it's a, you know, the cost, how much you spend on coaching is the big variable, and, but I'm also, I've had a business coach before, um, similar kind of price, and I think you get what you pay for. So if your coach costs you $50 a week, that's probably what you're going to get. Um, but obviously everyone has to have a budget. Um, I'm in a very lucky position where that's not as big an issue for me. So, um, but a place like Omnia, they have, you know, a lot of um, more cost effective options. So don't be afraid to reach out and have a look at what they offer. Um, and what you might find is that you can start off with not having one-to-one -one coaching or, and move into that later on. Depends what your goals are too. Like, I don't think, I was going from a very unhealthy, unfit position to trying to do an Ironman. So that's not a normal kind of um, journey. If you're a semi fit and you know you could probably just use one of their programs to get you across the line so don't um i don't think you have to have a coach but i think it's definitely well worthwhile certainly was for me anyway so i can't speak for anybody else though was training early in the day a choice or did you have to train then did it work for you i'm an early riser naturally i always have been and I don't know if anything will ever change that. So it does suit me to start my workouts first thing in the morning. Also, I just find it easier. Um, I've tried doing workouts late in the afternoon and 
you know, motivation and getting myself moving is much, much harder. I've got too much time to think about it. So get out of bed, get into your gear and get going is the best option for me. Also, it does help to fit around my life. So, you know, I've still got a family, I've still got a business to run, you know, so if my workouts are done before seven o'clock in the morning, most days, then that certainly makes life easier in all other respects. What were your three non-negotiables when it come to training? Well, I think the first non-negotiable is you just got to turn up. A lot of people, I think, get caught up in trying to do, have the best session every session. Forget that. You just got to turn up. Turning up is 90% of the job. Whether you have a fantastic session, whether you have an average session, or whether you put in half a session and you fall over and you collapse, you turned up. That is the first non-negotiable. Don't not turn up. Also, the other non-negotiable for me is I'm a glass half full person. If everything you look at is from a positive slant, you will have a much better time of this whole process. You've got to have a glass half full attitude. When shit goes wrong, and it will, I absolutely guarantee you'll have stuff go wrong. Being able to look at it in a positive way will make all the difference in terms of you getting up the next day and doing it all over again. And the third non-negotiable for me is just focusing on the steps. One step at a time. Don't look too far ahead. Don't look back. Just focus on where your foot's going next and what the next step is, because that, again, is the key to being able to do this again and again and again and keep moving forward. A lot of times we let our focus range to other things in terms of, oh, well, when am I gonna get to the end? You know, oh, look where I've come from. Why was it, that was so hard, whatever it might be. Forget all of that stuff. Just focus on what you have to do today, right now. Today I have to get up, I have to do this exercise, then I have to eat these meals. That's it, just focus on that. That's my neck, my other non-negotiable. Well, we're gonna go for a little run through the Glencoe area. was a good roll. 10k run here in Glencoe and it's not too, well it is cold this morning it's like five degrees or something but actually not too bad I still managed to work up a good sweat which is some sort of superpower that I have <coughs> so anyway off to have a nice warm shower now and go and do some more sightseeing what surprised you the most about this journey? I think the thing that surprised me the most about the whole journey has been the people on YouTube. Um, the support, the advice, the, just the love from everybody has been truly amazing. I don't, it's hard to describe to people who've never experienced it obviously, but, um, Everyone's been so amazing. Hundreds and hundreds of comments and support and it's really an amazing thing to experience. And I will take this opportunity again to thank everybody who's been supportive on YouTube. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting more of that and growing and trying to give more information to people. Uh, that's really what I, I want to do in the end is help everybody to on their journey um, while they watch my journey. So thank you again for all of your support, um, but it really has been quite amazing. How did your recovery from the Ironman itself go? Um, maybe shouldn't put this on the video, but the re my physical recovery went really well. Um, my feet weren't sore the next day, muscle soreness that you would expect. 
nothing dramatic to be honest um, in terms of what I ate and drank um, for my recovery not ideal uh, there certainly wasn't what Tom had put together for me uh, and in hindsight probably uh, I don't know whether it really made a hell of a lot of difference but it would have been better for me if I had have stuck to what he said but um, I think the biggest thing in terms of recovery for me was sleep I and that was hard to get I, I just didn't took a few days before I was sleeping properly again and I think that was probably the biggest overall impact on my recovery food wise um, you know I just ate a bit of shit really we were away from home and didn't have my normal stuff and you know that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it so I think obviously yeah and because I was going away on holidays and I don't know there was just a lot of I didn't I had planned um, to do the food recovery as suggested by Tom the nutritionist man but just didn't happen um, so yeah don't do as I do <laughs> so I don't know what to say about that it was a bit of a uh, a shambles to put it mildly did you find YouTube a double-edged sword? Did it put pressure on you? I actually really enjoyed doing YouTube, like creating the videos, figuring out the content. Uh, it was kind of relaxing and therapeutic in a lot of ways to me. So I didn't really have any issues with um, it being a double-edged sword, putting pressure on me or anything like that. There's probably like two episodes where I had trouble figuring out what I was going to do, but you know, um, that was mostly due to my laziness, not actually being under pressure. So no, I really loved the idea, the, the whole process of YouTube, to be honest. Uh, it was an interesting thing to do and I'm still really enjoying it. So there'll be lots more stuff coming. How did you fuel in the Iron Man? Was it just a gel every 30 minutes? The answer is no, it wasn't just a gel every 30. Uh, it's actually well planned and executed. Thank you, Tom uh, and Fergus for all the assistance over the time that they were coaching me uh, to fine tune and get this plan right. So I, I'm going to have to read this, hence the glasses. So pre-race for me, there was toast with jam, two bananas and the precision hydration um, choose. I had two of those or three of those in the three hours leading up to the start of the swim. So from when I got up at three, no, it was probably about 3.30 I think that I had my breakfast and then I just had a gel every, uh, one of those chews every hour basically up until then just to keep the level up because it's a long time between when you eat and the last and when you start the race on the bike uh, it was really straight after the sorry in transition i had two more uh, from the swim to the bike i had two more uh chews from so 30 grams of carbs in that in that and knocked back a half a liter of uh hydrolyte so some hydration and electrolytes just to give me a kickstart onto the bike. During the bike, it was basically, I used uh, Precision Hydration's Flow Gel, which is fantastic, and I had a mouthful every 20 minutes. That was what I'd worked out, um, and that got me to somewhere around 80 to 90 grams of carbs per hour, and that worked really well. Hydration-wise, it was just water that I got. Um, I was averaging, trying to have about 500 mils per hour or somewhere between 500 and a litre per hour um, and in terms of my electrolytes I was just using precision hydrations sodium tablets um, and I was having every time I had a mouthful of gel I had a tablet as well and that worked out perfectly um, so but that was my process so obviously I wouldn't recommend just cutting and pasting what I've done it took me six months to work out that that worked for me um, so put the time in do the work to figure out what works for you 
On the run, um, it was a little more, again, sorry, into the transition to the run, another uh, precision hydration chew and some more electrolytes. And then into the run, it was really every second aid station, I had a cup of water and half a banana and some lollies, like a, you know, the little mixed lollies that they hand out. Um, and that was basically my fuel for the run. So it was really straightforward, but I, again, all stuff that I had tested out in the real world to make sure that it all agreed with me. So, and that's really the biggest thing for me that I learned because so, I tried several different ways to fuel myself and a couple of them just made me feel sick and horrible. So this was the best version that worked for me and the flow gel I found really good from Precision Hydration and super simple. I know people worry that it's just a single source and if you drop the bottle, then you're buggered. But you know, if you worry about all those little things that can go wrong, then you wouldn't start in the first place. So, but do the work yourself, figure out what works for you, how it works in your stomach, because that's the biggest thing. But that's what I did. What was the biggest thing you learned or were surprised by in the 60 weeks of training? Uh, I think the biggest, for me, the weirdest thing and the biggest thing that I've learned is how little you actually need to eat to survive. Um, you grow up, you know, as a teenager, you can just, you know, I stuffed my face like, you know, but I went to the gym, I was exercising every day, I was very active and I used to just pound food into me like there was no tomorrow. Um, and so I think you get used to that. And then I guess I just never realized, you know, you go to a restaurant and they give you this huge plate of food. Everywhere you go, you get a huge portion. And so I just kind of got normal with that. But the truth is you need, you know, you get one of those plates and you can take three quarters of it off and you still be plenty. That's the biggest thing that I learned. You don't need very much food. Thanks so much for watching this week. Uh, it's an interesting video to make and there were more questions I could answer. Uh, so I will do more of these kind of videos. So please send through as many questions as you have and I'll try to get to them all because I didn't want to make a three hour video. Having said that, um, I hope this was useful for you and I hope all my answers satisfied your curiosity. Next week, we've got a very big video coming out in the announcement of what the next 12 months is going to look like, what my goals are, where we're going to get to. It's very exciting for me and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. If you like the video, make sure you hit subscribe, click the notifications bell, give it a like. It really does help and it makes me feel good about myself. Um, no, it's just a joke. Um, it really does help the algorithm. So uh, if you want to see more of my content, please do that. I hope you have a great week and I hope you've enjoyed some of the scenery here in Scotland. Make sure you take the next right.